Uh, we have a couple of points of news that we want to get through today. Uh, one of them has to do with the famine that we're seeing on a continent and how we can help stamp that out and, and really what it means for the rest of the world. Uh, so George Rupp is here. He's the co-president of the U.S. Global Leadership Coalition. And then joining us from our D.C. Bureau is Dan Glickman. He's the chairman of U.S. Global Leadership Co Coalition. Both gentlemen, I, I welcome you and thank you for being here this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first of all, Dan, I want to go to you. What is happening in Africa that the world needs to know about and what does it mean? Well, there is a famine and starvation and impacting millions of lives in the Horn of Africa, in Somalia, in parts of Kenya, in parts of Ethiopia. We've been through this before. It's almost like deja vu all over again, but uh, a lot of it has been caused by the political instability in Somalia, but you have huge numbers of refugees that are trying to move out of Somalia and to go into Kenya. Uh, to escape uh, all sorts of political terrorism that's basically happening mm -hmm. there. And their agriculture systems have been a total failure. So there's just at risk are millions of people of dying because of famine and starvation. Uh, George, one of the things that we've seen in addition to some of the tough pictures uh, coming out of that part of the world is militants in, in places like Somalia and, and all over that region really. Where people are suffering, you'll see and in Sudan, where people are suffering, you'll see them say, well, you know, We'll pull back, we'll let the aid come in, and then they change their minds. Uh, what, what is really problematic, or what is the challenge for, for the UN at this point? Well, I think the major challenge is not only to provide humanitarian assistance now, but to set the groundwork for not having a recurrence of the famine in, in 10 years. Uh, and that, it seems to me, we can do. And, and the reason I'm confident we can do it is that we have, we have done it effectively in neighboring Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of differences between Ethiopia and Somalia, including the presence of uh, terrorists and, uh, that are much, who are much more visible in Somalia. But if we look at the famine that occurred in, in Ethiopia in 2002, there were 13 million people who were in danger of starvation. Because of steps taken in the last 10 years, there are only 4.5 to 5 million people who are in danger of, of serious mm. malnutrition this year. Let me just mention, because the International Rescue Committee has been on the ground in, in Ethiopia during that whole period, I'll mention a couple of interventions that really make a big difference. One is working with communities and with the Ethiopian government to build sustainable water systems so that there is mm -hmm. uh, the capacity to store up water during times when there is water and have it available <coughs> during times of famine. A second example is to work with pastoralists so that they can store feed in cereal banks that's available uh, uh, when there is a acute shortage so that animals don't all die. Mm -hmm. Third example is training community health workers, uh, mm -hmm. Ethiopians, not others, who in, can work with communities in sanitation and hygiene and in preventing then the outbreak of cholera and diarrhea, which takes many lives in such situations. So I think we need to of course respond to the Im immediate emergency in Somalia now, but do it with the view toward of the preventing uh, yeah. a recurrence of this. You know, having been in that part of the world in the last few years, I, I can tell you from personal experience that what you're describing is simply setting up a government. And, and I don't know that we can do that. <laughs> I mean, quite frankly, when you talk about, and I tick them off here, setting up sustainable water supplies, cereal banks, and training community health workers, going to some of the ground places that I've been to, that's starting from negative zero. That's starting in negative no. I mean, you've got to grow a government in those well, places. Well, I, I think that's a, a completely accurate comment. And one of the reasons for the differences between Ethiopia and Somalia is not only that there's been 10 years of preparation, so there isn't a recurrence, but also because there's a viable government that has taken this seriously, that has worked with the international community. So Somalia poses a really huge challenge because at this point there has been no government for, for two decades. And that means... Uh, a, a role that the international community has to play in helping to construct that government. All right, Dan, I, I heard you take a deep breath. Go yeah, ahead and add right. something. I'm sorry about my breath. But no, anyway, no, no. I, I'd say two, uh, two comments I would make in, in light of what the excellent comments George just made. Today, we're celebrating, or not celebrating, commemorating the terrible tragedy of 10 years ago at, uh, over this weekend of 9-11. Um, and, and part of that uh, has to do with uh, uh, conditions around the world which cause uh, uh, the politics to fester, the politics of uh, despair, and, uh, and, and, of course, economic disaster. And so both the United States as well as the United Nations have, are trying to 
become more modern more aggressive more progressive in efforts to engage in particularly as it relates to building self sufficiency and agriculture food and other basic institutions the u s has put in about six hundred million dollars so far into this into this famine area the united nations through the world food program has been Mm -hmm. very very aggressive in this area but we cannot withdraw I think the big lesson of what's happening in in the the Horn of Africa, as well as looking at the whole implications of 9-11, is an America which which withdraws is an America which not only helps humanitarian assistance in the world, but also increases our own influence in the world as well. Yeah, I I don't think anybody that I've heard or read is talking about withdrawing. I think that there is a little pushback on being able to trace that $600 million or, or trace some of that money and, and maybe put some strings on that money so that we know exactly where it's going to. And, and then really talking responsibly about what can be done and what we should be doing and what other countries should be doing. That's well, what well, I've been reading. Well, uh, well and, I, and actually the United States through uh, its Feed the Future initiative, uh, mm-hmm. efforts through USAID and particularly Secretary Clinton's leadership in this area, you know, I don't work for the government. I don't have to say these things. But the fact right. of the matter is, is that we have begun the process of engaging self-sufficiency in the developing world, which is what is needed long term in order to get uh, some progress. Wow. Look at these pictures. I, I, I tell you, until you see it firsthand, you have no idea what a little effort on our part can achieve over there. It is, re- And these children are just beautiful. It's really, really heartwarming to see. Uh, that we're trying, and, and some of it is being uh, is making a difference. On our opinion page on foxnews.com is all about this, what it means to us, how we can help, um, how we can prevent this. George put it so beautifully, exactly the steps that have to be taken. Now we have to embrace the reality of what is possible. Go to foxnews.com, click on the opinion page, and find out more. Gentlemen, George Ruff and Dan Glickman, thank you both for being with us. Thank, thank you. you very much. All right.